Hey guys, I got an awesome video for you today. How would you like to instantly add 10 miles an hour to your serve today? That is our goal. So I can't wait to get started. My name is Pete from Crunch Time Coaching. Also hang around to the end of the video because I'm gonna view a completely free serve course. We're talking about 30 plus videos. So let's get started with this video and we'll get to tip number one. Okay, so tip number one to instantly add 10 miles an hour to your serve have you heard of the kinetic chain? What is the kinetic chain? It's basically using ground force for power. And a lot of people are always focused on the upper body, right? We know we want racket head speed to hit a nice big serve, right? But once I start adding my legs, I'm gonna get even more power out of what's happening out of here. And I wanna sink the entire body. So it's using your legs. Now, don't get intimidated. If you are somebody who's 50, 60, 70 years old, and you're like, you know what? I, I, I used to be able to jump on my serve. I don't jump anymore. You don't have to jump to use your legs. Now, let me demonstrate. There's a couple different ways to use your legs. The first way I suggest you start using your legs is I want you to think of yourself like a golfer or a baseball player or somebody who's punching. Where is the power coming from in the legs? They're gonna drive and go backwards before they go forward. That's a big thing. Think about your forehand. What if you just went forward and hit? How much power is there? No, we wanna be able to back into a forehand and then transfer all the weight in there. We're doing the same exact thing on the serve. Think about a golfer, right? The golfer is not hitting off the front foot. You can see them really sway back. They don't jump. They don't jump for power, but they're certainly using your legs. They sway back and then there's a lot of power shooting through this hip and out. And you see how my toe is up here? That's a classic golf finish. That's actually what I want you to start with, just so you can start to feel how to use your legs. And it's also gonna help a lot of other things like your toss, your rhythm, your body control. So here, step number one on using your legs is just work on, whoops, you know what? I moved too far. All I can do is turn the toe, right? See that? That's much better. All I can do is turn the toe and that is such a great rhythm and I'm using my legs and I can feel the legs come back and push right in. Let me demonstrate a couple more of these and this is the step one on how to use your legs to instantly start to get more power into your serve and you don't even need to jump to do it. Okay, so step two, and I really would like you to treat this as your warm-up routine. Your serve's gonna improve, you're gonna play better in your matches, you're gonna really understand what your body can and cannot do, and what's a challenge. So if I were just warming up for a match, the next thing I would do, and you can actually, if you're not a jumper, this is the actual motion you wanna use, is what I'm gonna do here, I like to think of this as the baseball pitcher finish. So I'm gonna come here, use my legs, push into the ball and then come around strongly. And I also really want my toe to be finishing at my exact target. So right now it's a deuce court and let's just pretend I'm hitting through like the center of the box. This is how I want my toe to finish. And notice I've got a slight lunge. In tennis we want to use our body but we never want it to be so uncomfortable to where like it's a challenge, right? I want to get down here. How would I pop up from there? So I got a slight lunge but I'm comfortable. And then what I can do too is not only is use this for a stronger serve, but I can use this for recovery. So as I land and my opponent's getting ready to hit, I can pop back into a split step and be ready for my first ball. So this is a great service motion if you don't want to jump, but you still want to use your legs and you want to get some nice power on your serve. And I come around right there. Again, I probably need to lead myself into the court a little more. Boom, that felt much more natural. That time we actually hit the fence on one bounce without jumping. That was pretty high off the fence actually, which is pretty cool. Again, coming right there, finishing strong. Really nail that. Can you hold it for three seconds? One, two, three. See, can you imagine yourself as a baseball pitcher and coming here and throwing then coming around like that? That's the same exact move that you wanna do. After you do that, then practice your recovery. Come here, get that landing, pop back, practice a shadow stroke. 
that'd be a great exercise for you to do. Okay, so watch this guys. Come in here, gain that baseball pitcher finish around. Baseball pitcher finish around. Oh, that was a big serve right there. Around, and they're just getting bigger and stronger. The more I do it, the more I'm able to feel my legs grip the court. Okay guys, so as you can see, there's a lot of work to do when you're working on your legs and a lot of different options. I hope you're getting excited about this and go out and practice this at the court today. Now, the, the way you now decide like, how good am I at jumping and should I jump? I've had some people ask me, should you jump on your serve? And I want you to think about basketball. Think about LeBron James, how do you think he probably first learned to hit a layup? Probably stood right by the basket and shot with both feet on the ground. Then what he did, was after he learned how to do that, he probably did a little skip and that worked. And now finally, if he had a basket to win the game, it'd probably be easiest for him to dunk, okay? So the dunk in basketball is like the jump in tennis on the serve. So you wanna ask yourself, you know, can you jump easy and does it add power and, and do you feel just as control in your body? See, when LeBron goes and jumps and dunks, he has complete body control. If I were trying to jump and dunk, I'd be completely out of control and would, wouldn't feel my body up in the air trying to do that and it would be counterproductive. So, so that's what you want to think about. Now what I want you to try and do, and again it can go into your warm-up, I like to call this the lazy jump. And so what I like to do, and I notice a lot of pros do this as well, Federer does this in his warm-up, is, and don't worry about foot faulting, I like to uh, basically do like a little step in and then lazily jump into the surf and it feels really good and it helps you develop a pretty good rhythm. Just a lazy jump into that serve. And again, you're not worried if the ball's in or out. You just come here, you step on it, bend your legs, push in. Okay, and I find when I do this, I can get a lot of power with not much effort. Okay, these things are like almost halfway up the fence right now, and the balls are actually pretty dead. So this is a great way to practice your jump and see if you've got what it takes to be able to make a jumping serve. See that? Right there. And it feels awesome. And you should be landing into the court. Look at those serves. We'll do one more. And then once you get that down, the lazy jump, then you just want to get into whatever your serve routine is. You have a couple of different options to jump off of. You have right here where you just basically get in a platform stance. That's kind of what I'm doing right now except for I'm doing like a little step in but the platform stance and just get in there and jump or you can do a pinpoint. This ball's super dead. You can do a pinpoint and what you can do when you get here step on up, bend those legs, push off. You want about a 60-40, okay? So right here, when you come back, you almost get like 100% on this leg. Then you come in here, you feel about even, and as you're getting ready to go in, it gets about 60% of your weight here, 40% of your weight here, so you're still using both legs, and then up. So I'll just demo a couple so you can feel that. And the more you use your legs, gravity is going to want to fight down. And so you'll hit, you'll tend to use a lot more or hit a lot more serves in the net when you start jumping. So you got to really focus on staying up, <coughs> which I didn't do there. We'll do one more. I got to get that serve over the net. So every time I hit a serve in the net, I tell myself to keep my head up, keep that head up. And there it was. Oh, that's my biggest serve. Okay, tip number two to instantly add 10 miles an hour to your serve. This can make a big difference, guys. And this tip's gonna be a lot quicker, okay? And that's your stance. In fact, just yesterday, out here teaching the HP high performance kids at Windy Hill, which is an amazing club. Love you, Marcelo. Love you, Garrett. Love all the kids. And I was watching Will. This guy's probably like, I don't know, 6'4", maybe? He's a huge kid. It's got a pretty good serve, pretty big, but it could be a lot bigger. And 
one of the main reasons I think he doesn't have bigger serve is his stance. He tends to point this toe directly forward. The other leg's about here. And then when he goes to serve, we'll take a look at the back view. So now our cameraman's going to move around to the back. And I notice that his hips don't really move. He comes here and what you see is kind of what you get. He throws the ball up and when he goes, you're not able to see his chest at all from the back view, which if you look at the best servers in the world, you see their chest. And a lot of this, right, is being inhibited by Will's stance. So he comes here, he throws the ball up, he throws it also way over his head, which I think takes power away. And then he kind of hits a serve like that. And he can hit some big ones. He can hit some, he's kind of erratic on a serve too. I think this would help his serve get more easy power and be more consistent. Now take a look at this. Now what I have is look at how this toe has moved back and look at there's an angle, right? There's an angle in my toe leading to the net post right there, okay? And by just doing this simple move without even trying, you know, everybody's always working on the rotation. I don't have to work on my rotation. My stance is making the rotation. So this, look at what a big deal of stance could be. I'm here and then when I go to throw that ball up, now all of a sudden I can say hi to the cameraman right there. See that? So I can come here and I, again, I love to just really show the, and get the rotation by doing my, my lazy jump step in. So you're gonna see great rotation when I do this. I'm gonna come here, gonna lazily jump in. Watch how I almost get into like McEnroe style without having to get as deep as McEnroe. But look at the chest come back and now I'm able to hit. Oh my gosh, I hit the camera. <laughs> that actually is gonna look pretty cool though. Uh, sorry. All right. So we'll just take a look at one more. I'm coming here. Watch the rotation. Look at the, from the back view. You can see that. Come here. You can see my chest easily. And then I can go in and hit that serve. So that's tip number two. I guarantee if you get that down, you're going to be adding some major pop to that serve. And it's going to feel good. <laughs> tip number three. We have to admit something about tennis. It's stressful. Tennis is a stressful game. Whether it's one person watching you or a full stadium, something about tennis stresses people out. So what you always have to do is check in your grip tension. Because even though most of you right now know to be light in your grip, some of you are going to get tight in the biggest uh, points of the match. And that's why, have you ever noticed the longer a match lasts and the more nervous you get, the slower you start to hit? So you always got to check in with your grip tension. And two of my favorite servers of all time right, or at least over the last 20 years have been Roger Federer and Serena Williams. And if you look at them, they look so relaxed, okay? Roger kind of looks relaxed on all his strokes. What's interesting to me about Serena, let me know what you guys think. Sometimes on her ground strokes, I notice her getting tight. On her serve, she always looks regal. She always looks so relaxed. So, and it all starts with the grip tension. So make sure when you come on up here and you go to serve that when you're set, see as I'm holding this racket, I've got about a 90% of the weight on just resting on the ball here, okay? Look, you can see space in my hand. Look how low I am on the grip, guys, okay? If you're up here holding the racket, right, you're not able to use this lever as fast, and you're probably holding the racket really tight. So a little secret is to actually let the racket kind of dangle, right? Thumb right here being super loose. Get up here, place the ball under the racket and put all the weight on the tennis ball and very late, little weight in your hand. And then as you go through the entire motion, try and keep that in there. You're going to squeeze a little bit when you hit for sure. That's going to happen naturally. But try and let the racket almost fall off the ball and start your momentum for you. Whether you come here or what did Roddick do? Roddick came here and he actually raised the racket with the offhand. Take a look at the video. He would raise his racket with the off hand, not with his dominant hand, then he'd get it to here and then pop way down and hit that serve. So the more you can take those ideas in your serve, you're gonna hit a bigger serve. Okay, tip number four, if you've been following my videos for a while, you've been watching my serve, there's something I almost put into every single video. So this is the first time watching my videos. You gotta learn what the secret power source is. This is where you're gonna, this could easily, you do this right, especially if you've not been doing this, this all of a sudden could add 20 miles an hour to your serve. That's pretty exciting stuff. So what Andy Roddick, we just talked about Andy Roddick, he had the ultimate secret power source. What is that? He would come here and then boom, there is the secret power source. Look how the tip of the racket is going forward. 
Look at the elbow position, okay? This is extremely important. This is a big power move right here. This all professional athletes, think about Tom Brady going back to throw a long bomb. He's gonna be in that same position, okay? Many, many recreational players completely miss out on the secret power source and they bring the racket back here, okay? Now, if you brought your racket back here, now again, think about you being Tom Brady and you're getting ready to throw the long bomb to win the game. You're not gonna throw the ball very far from here. Imagine if you drop back like this and now you get ready to throw the long bomb, you're not gonna get a lot of action, right? You don't look like an athlete. If you drop back here and you're in the secret power source, now look, I can heave that ball way down the field, score a touchdown. That's what we wanna be able to do with our serve. In fact, I advise many people to start in the secret power source and what you wanna do, here's the key to success. You've gotta hold it in there. Lots of people when they start tossing, this is a big mistake. They toss and they bring the racket behind their head. Look where my legs are, they're in full bend. The racket's behind the head. Now I'm gonna miss a lot of power when I come out of that. What the great Andy Roddick would do is he'd hold that secret power source super long. He'd be here, he'd bend those legs way down. He'd still be in secret power source. Then his legs go to explode up, bam, then he drops and hits that big, big serve. So remember the secret power source the next time you wanna hit the serve of your life and we'll get to our fifth and final power move. Okay, fifth and final tip. This again could be a 20 mile an hour tip right here. Okay, we promised 10, but you might get 20. If you, especially when you add secret power source and this final one, cracking the whip. Okay, not enough people crack the whip on the serve. You wanna make contact with the ball and so what ends up happening is you wait too long to start your momentum into the swing. Let me show you what I mean. So, so many servers, when they go to serve, they throw the ball up, they get the racket extremely close to the ball, and then they push through their serve with all their might, and they get very, very little power on that. So they're coming here, boom, 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 and ah! And that's basically a push serve, okay? I'm sure you've seen that classic serve at the club. Now, Andy Roddick, myself, now I'm not comparing myself to Andy, okay? Andy, I'm not comparing myself to you, buddy. You are the man. You are the man. But I think, I think like you, I think, okay? Maybe you can write a comment below and let me know if you think just like me, Andy. But when I get to about here, okay, and my legs start to fire, I think about cracking a whip, okay? So imagine here, I love to use the basket as an example. If I have a whip in my hand and I'm gonna crack the basket, how much like whoosh, am I gonna get into the basket? How much whip and momentum are I gonna, not very much. What would you advise me to do? You'd say, Pete, stand back with your whip, crack that whip, bam, and then by the time it hits the basket, it would wrap around the basket and have a big whoosh sound. That's what I think about when I'm serving. That's, I wanna hear that cracking sound off the serve and I wanna feel it. So. Right here, when I get about to right here, this is when I start to think about cracking the whip, right? A lot, of pro, a lot of coaches will tell you to snap, right? Whatever works for you, it's back here. It's not as you get close to the ball. If you're thinking about snapping as you're getting close to the ball, that's too late. So we get here, up, and then bam, full speed ahead. Get here, throw it up, and crack. And that was, I sure hope, did we get that one? We got it hitting the fence? You see that, guys? That's how you get your power. That's how you improve your serve, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you noticed the video quality. I think, we haven't edited it yet, but I think it's gonna go way through the roof. And that's because I have man, man Will right here. We're gonna bring him on camera here to end this. And we're gonna talk about his YouTube channel, but, but first, I wanna tell you about a free serve course you can get. You get a free serve course called Serving A to Z. What does that mean, A to Z? It's the A to Z of serving. It's learning how to get the right rhythm. It's learning how to get your toss under control. Then we start to learn how to get more power. Then we start to learn how to do advanced stuff like a slice serve and a kick serve. It's a really awesome course. We're talking about 30 plus videos, 100% free. And all you gotta do is go up in the corner and click on the card or go in the description box below and click on that link, you get access to the course. 
It's pretty awesome. And if you can just do me a favor right now, we'll bring Will on, but if you could do me a favor, if you like this video, if you can just tell the effort and the passion we put in this video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up. And if you love tennis, subscribe to this channel. Hello, my name is Will Buchanan. I'm out here helping uh, Peter Freeman out, recording his tennis tips. This is my first time doing a tennis video. Uh, you can actually go to my YouTube. I got, I got quite a few videos on there, uh, pretty random stuff, but you know, I'm learning to, uh, you know, get my stuff in order. Uh, it's Perry Production Net, all one word. And uh, hey, if you like my stuff, hey, give me a subscribe button. It's my first time actually talking about my videos, but hey, I got, got some neat stuff, got some comedy sketches stuff on there, so hopefully you'll like it. <sighs>